Hey, what's good party people? BQ here with the Impact Lounge. I know I'm a little behind on this, folks. Um, I'm on vacation right now, so I can't jump on things the way that I wanted to. By now, I think you all know that Jeremy Borash has left Impact Wrestling in favor, in favor, I should say, of World Wrestling Entertainment NXT. I didn't want to drop my thoughts on this right away because I really wanted to collect myself throughout the day and hopefully gather some more information before I really stated my opinion on it. Seems like he's heading over to the NXT product, um, and this was a Triple H hiring. We are obviously having a problem, and Ring of Honor pointed this out. We're having a tampering issue. Um, now, tampering is very difficult to prove unless you, you start an investigation. And, uh, you know, 99% of the time, it's really not worth the money at the end of the day. Not, well, not worth the trouble. There was obviously tampering going on with the NXT product um, to the other companies. This is really shocking, and it is a big loss to Impact Wrestling. It really is. And I'm going to try to be optimistic here as well. And you, usually I'm on the channel and I'm kind of downplaying uh, certain stars when they leave the company. You know, we're, I, we talk about EC3 or Lastly. You know, I've always said, um, well, they've done everything they can. They're not moving the needle. So I, I'm going to take that approach with Borash a little bit, but I don't want to downplay what he meant to this company being a part of, you know, TNA from day one. And, you know, which they often said was the glue that held the company together. And we know the magic who worked with Broken Brilliance and everything like that. Play-by-play -play wise, Jeremy Boris was terrible. Um, I was excited when he took over. But now when I, you know, if I fire up the GWN and listen to the Josh and Pope, like that was better than what we're getting right now. Jeremy Borash, I, you know, I thought he had a good voice for it. But here, here's like one thing. I, um, I don't want to harp on negatives too much when it comes to JV, but, you know, this was something I'd been calling for for several weeks right now. I was, I was kind of like, I'm not feeling him in the booth because he doesn't know the moves. Um, you know, I, I think it was the X Division match a couple weeks ago on Impact where, you know, it was, uh, Xavier and Ishimori and one of them hit a big move. And right when you think Jeremy Borash is going to say the move, he's like, and don't forget to subscribe to the Global Wrestling Network. Like, it was just getting bad. And his voice can be a little cartoony at times. And when you pair that up with the green ropes and everything, like, you don't feel like you're watching a serious wrestling product. The times I've been in the impact zone and he's, you know, like, interacted with the the fans i always thought dude he, he makes it sound like we're at a theme park <laughs> which we were but he made us very like step right you know step right up and come see the fabulous rosemary you know what i'm saying so i really feel like they needed a new voice with this being said everything that he does about backstage all the hats that he wore in the company like he, he was a very integral piece it's obvious, I've said this many times, TNA is dead. They are moving away from everything that is TNA pretty much. This was something I think that really caught us caught us off guard. And while I usually say, hey, you know, this wrestler and that wrestler left because it was their time to go. Like this one, I am kind of having a hard time wrapping my head around it. Like this is, this is a, a, a genuine WWE offered money and he took the money and left. Like that, that's what this really feels like to me. I don't really, I don't really see that with the wrestlers necessarily all the time. It's a, it's a wrestling company's job to want to have the best talent, so I can kind of understand that. But what's crazy to me is how this company just, and I'm talking about WWE, just like continues to want to poach from other companies. But backstage officials now, like I get the talent, the on-screen talent, I get that. But like, you know, like in sports, you don't see teams prying away assistant coaches from each other and things like that it's just it's just it's ridiculous you know and it's frustrating and it's a good hire for for wwe now i'm going to approach this from a bit of an optimistic standpoint here okay while jeremy borash may have been the glue that held the company together you guys have heard me say this before was he moving the needle you know was he doing something so great that he was keeping the listeners and bringing in new listeners no he i mean not listeners i'm thinking of the podcast new viewers no he wasn't and i think what but i think with this loss we we may get a feeling for what this guy actually does you know sometimes like if you're married and one of the you know your spouse or you goes out of town and you know the other one's stuck with the kids and, and after that they say okay you know now i see how much you did around here we could see that a little bit 
it could be a lot more transparent than it is right now. With this being said, he's not irreplaceable. There's there's going to be good people out there who can fill those roles. It, it, it's not... It might be kind of a game changer for WWE because he's a great hire, but it's not... I don't consider it a game changer to lose him, especially because I really didn't want him in the announce, announce booth anymore. So... I covered before that Josh Matthews was stepping out of the booth. I don't believe there's plans to bring him back. There could be, with this being said. But the plan was for Jeremy Boras to remain on play-by-play -play and Don Callis to actually step in doing color. This is something a lot of people really want because he's excellent. But he kind of said, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I'm running the company. I don't got time to do this. But, you know, I guess he decided maybe he could. And this would be excellent because if you turn on the WWE product, I don't, I don't you know, granted, I haven't watched in a couple years, but... I never thought either announced team was any good. I, I didn't. Um, and the ROH announced team, I thought, was okay. Uh, I think a lot of people thought of, thought of, they were better than I thought they were. But at least they called the action. You know what I mean? Like, Jeremy was not call, calling the action any, at all. And it was driving me nuts. Like, the only match, the only moves that were being called is John Math Josh Matthews yelling out, Blue Thunder Bomb. So, on screen, I don't think it's a huge loss. Um... I'm going to miss him calling the, you know, being the ring announcer for the main events and stuff. Because this guy that they got in Canada is awful. I don't know if he's going to be at the new tapings. I mean, they brought the referees over, so I, I would imagine. But this guy is horrendous. Like, he's worse than the guy they had in India. Um, So we'll, we'll see. You know, so it, it's the on, you know, some of the on-screen stuff I'm, I'm going to kind of miss. You know, obviously, Mackenzie, Mackenzie Mitchell does stuff backstage. But um, as the backstage correspondent now, but... It is a big loss, folks, but I just, you know, I do want to paint that picture, like, you know, because I often say, I, I think, like, a businessman before, like, a wrestling fan, like, was the Jeremy Borash glue, you know, um, necessarily bringing in new viewers, or was it just maintaining what we had already, you know, so I don't think this was one of those, those moves where the company was in cost-cutting measures. I think this really, this dude really took... A, a big money deal and left. What I don't understand from like the WWE side, they have like 50 people who do the job that he does or the jobs that he does. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like a small company like Impact, you know, brings in this one guy to be a game changer. Like they, they have plenty of people who play this guy's role. It, it's, it really feels like sabotage <laughs> to be totally honest. I'm just, it just blows me away that Jeremy Boras like finally cracked and being such a loyal impact guy to, to really, you know, you know, he has to feel some sort of way about, you know, deep down about NXT and WWE taking talent. He has to feel that way. And then for him to like ultimately do it himself too, crazy, absolutely nuts. So I do want to wrap this up because, you know, I want to give you guys a chance to say what you want to say in the comments. I, I just want to say it is a big loss, but it's not the end of the world. I really do trust these guys running the company. Anyone I know is in the impact zone for these tapings said this is the best television they have done in years. And um, we need something new, folks. People wanted Dixie out of the picture. When Dixie's out of the picture, new people are going to bring in their guys. That's just the way it works. But we need something new, and they have to distance themselves away from the TNA product as much as the hardcores don't want that to happen. But that is what's happening. This is probably one they weren't prepared for or expecting. But it is what's happening. I trust these guys to put really good people in place. And hungry people too. You know, what one would argue that as good as Jeremy Borash was it was he what he did, was he was he hungry for the company anymore? Or do we want to bring in people who need that new opportunity to prove themselves? You guys feel me on that? So Thanks for listening. Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm sorry for uploading this late. Just the nature of the beast right now. I will talk to you guys soon. Please hit that subscribe button if you're a first timer. Peace.